Okay, so now, uh, Tim, we're back on uh, another chapter, let's, I guess call it number three, in text tools. Okay. I, I want to create something from absolute scratch, and just for fun, why don't we use uh, the permaboss tigers or whatever. Okay. And uh, essentially, uh, there's two le lessons I want to accomplish here. One is I just want to do an outline of the word, and then the second part of the lesson would be like, just a line mode. So pick a, a font that's pretty square and easy. That's easy to read, I mean, not a complex, really okay. font. So um, the way you gain access to the text uh, tools in Rhinestone Works is uh, you click on the text tool here, the letter A on the left-hand side. So I'm going to single click, and I'm going to use the, uh, the uh, text icon here called Text Compose. Before you do, explain what those three, four things are that I see. Um, this is uh, something called Frame Text Compose. It, you would use this if you wanted the text to be restricted to the size of the plate. And um, what that means is that if you click and click on this and then click on the plate, um, there's a defined set of margins that are applied to the text. Define it. Just do a little quick example. Okay, so if I single click here and then I click on my page, uh, I'm going to, say, increase the size of the text. And then That's I'm going to the height there, right? Yeah. And then I'm going to type in the word perma boss, and I'm going to incorporate it. All right. Now you notice that crunching it together. As I'm typing in the text, there's a defined set of mar there's a defined set of margins here on the left and right hand side. Yeah. And as I add more text in, the text gets compressed. Okay. Now if I hit the enter key. And I'm going to go So you notice that the kerning and the compression ratios have all, are applied to the second line of text as well. But the, 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 what the idea here is that the text is automatically centered on the plate and it uh, holds the it's, it's sized to fit within the plate. Any compressions are applied to all lines as well. Uh, just explain to, to in lay terms what kerning is, please. Uh, kerning is the spacing between characters. Okay. So in this particular case, out of experience, you typically wouldn't use it because the customer is generally specifying, I want left chest or I want full front. So, uh, and you have to, with physics, the crystals are two millimeters minimum wide. So if you put too much information in the space, you, your crystals will be jammed up overlapping. So it's not used that much, but I see its purpose. Can we um, just get rid of this? Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm clicking on the select tool to select the text, and then I'm hitting the delete key on my keyboard. Okay. Can you arrange how many undos you have, by the way? Uh, under the options menu yeah. and then rhinestone setup here, there's something called the undo setup. And this allows me to... Uh, specify the amount of memory that we want to use in order to uh, store all the undo information. So this can be set up in the program. Normally it's a, it's a pretty advanced um, option and I would just go with the defaults that uh, are set up in the undo setup window. But um, Does uh, 128 megabyte mean you make a lot of mistakes? Yes. Okay. Up 128 megabytes. <laughs> unless you're scanning something in that's a really high resolution, full like unless you scan something in that was full color and you know large, um, you know you uh, you probably wouldn't impo impede that uh, that uh, that amount of memory. Okay, so just leave it as a default setting, out, right? We we'll just leave it as a. Would you say it's safe that there's 10, 15 undos, no question? Uh, it's it actual it, it's limited by the amount of memory. But, uh, yes, for sure. Okay, I got it. So, theoretically, if I have a, if I'm duplicating a design with 500 crystals on a template, theoretically I would use more undo space? You would be using more memory and limiting uh, or reducing down the amount of undos that you have access to. So, a good practice is open up a file and give it a name and save it early on. Uh, it's always a good idea to... Um, save a file at the start. Okay, you know. Let's do it right here. Show it to me. So um, let's say I want to let's add some text in, and then I'll show you how. So what I'm doing is I'm uh, clicking once on the page, and I can set the size of the text by uh, adjusting the font height here. Okay. And then I'm going to pick a font from my font list. So let's go to this 20 C E D D E E. And I'm going to type in permaboss. Okay. Okay. Now, if I wanted to save this, I click on File, and 
can actually save this file wherever I want on my hard drive. Uh, I think most people would have some kind of a default folder that they would store their job files in. You know, in my case, I have a docs folder here, and I'm going to just type in uh, our works. test one, and I'm going to save, and that file is now saved. And every so often it's a good idea to save the file. Okay? Uh, okay. So uh, by selecting this text, I can also tell that the object height is 41 millimeters high by 323 uh, millimeters wide. Okay, so we're on a work surface of 300 by 300, which happens to be the mini monkey maker size. Okay. So that's a bit too big, obviously. Okay, so I can, so what I can do is if I select the uh, corner nut here, I, I can actually scale this down so that it fits on the plate. And the proportions stay because that lock was on, right? On um, actually, in this case, the proportions stay because I'm selecting the corner, the corner nuts yeah. of, of the selected object. But if I adjusted the, uh, the object width or height here, I would have to make sure, if, and I wanted the scaling to remain the same, then I would make sure that this uh, lock is in what uh, in this lock position or in the down position. Okay. And changes, I can say I want this to be 260 and hit enter, and you'll notice that the, the object height changes as well. Okay. Now, you know what's common is uh, like a collegiate look where that is curved okay. on the front of a sweatshirt or a t-shirt or whatever. Can you do that for me what, and walk me through? Okay, so I'm, I, I have the text selected on screen. I'm going to go to transform and then fit text to arc. And it's automatically generated the arc here. I can then... Wait, that's just a, a default there? Yeah. And I'm just, genera I'm just moving the center nub up to position it. And... Um, what if I don't like that curve that's not that it's too much, too little? I can grab a hold of this knob right here yeah. and adjust the um, the uh, arc radius and the arc angle. Okay, so I can put in an exact thing, and I can put in uh, by feeling too, right? So there's your there's your arc. Okay. And um, we're all set to go to apply a rhinestone to it if we want to. Yeah, zoom in a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to use my magnifying tool. I'm going to single click once and then single click on the zoom in uh, magnifying tool. And then I'm just going to draw a bounding box around this and then it'll zoom in. Okay. Okay. So, uh, do you want to apply a rhinestone already? Might as well, right? We could. Okay, so why don't we just do that? It's a bit advanced. I didn't want to get there yet. But we'll just do that really simple thing and then we'll, we'll go back to the font. Okay, so let's go to layout and then clip art and go to, and then select the elements option here. Okay. Uh, it automatically defaults to the rhinestones folder. I'm going to double click on the rhinestones folder, and then you'll see the VS series of rhinestones available in the um, in this little clip art viewer. Okay, so that just happens to be uh, all the SS6, SS8, SS10, SS12. Can you point your mouse on those as we go along? SS16. SS20, SS24, SS30, those are all the sizes, okay. Correct. And so, uh, it's just for the, the people listening and watching, it doesn't make a difference if you use a Swarovski stone, a Korean stone, a Precioso stone, or a machine cut stone, it's based on the SS, right? And we're just going to pick that. So in this case, uh, uh, let's pick, uh, you know, SS6. Uh, okay, so I'm going to double click on the VS2006 folder. And here are the available elements in the uh, VS2006 series. So what basically I need to know that if I choose the blue one, that I'm, I'm mentally assigning that to, for example, a clear stone. If I choose the green one, theoretically it could be a green stone, but it's not going to be that shade of green. It's more or less the placement of the information, right? Correct. Okay, so why don't we pick blue, so, or pick any color that's different than what's on the screen. Okay, so I'm going to select the